Welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. Yes, it's the first brew in the new brew space. Very excited. Um, gotta say, it's, it's like Pat Benatar said in the 80s, massive anxiety. She said anxiety, I'm saying massive. I started my brew day at 9 a.m. realizing I really wasn't ready. It's 2 p.m., very late in the day. Usually I call it at noon, but 2 p.m. I've had so many little things I want to make sure. First, I wanna make sure I have everything I need to brew. Still not 100% sure, I gotta double check one more thing. And I wanna make sure I have good camera angles so you can see everything. So what are we brewing? A Vienna lager. What are we brewing it on? The Anvil Foundry. Why? I could have done brew in a bag, I could have done the Easy Brew Compact, which I really do like a lot. But I wanted to brew on something I'm extremely comfortable brewing on. Plus, because of that height and pulling the grain basket out, yeah, <laughs> I got a ladder. There have been so many debates on how I was going to do this, um, even considered a motorcycle lift. Yes, you heard me, a motorcycle lift. So I can have the brew system down low, bring it up, put it back down low, do whatever I need to do. If you have some suggestions, let me know. The other stainless steel table is a few inches lower, so I could have done that. But I wanted to do this because one of my goals is to eventually have three systems all brewing, if not four systems, all at the exact same time on this system, on this table. So. We'll go from there. Don't forget, like, subscribe, keep sharing. Let's jump right into the brew. First of all, yeah, got the new brew paddle. Let's just get that out of my way. It's going to be a Vienna lager. And I took a very simple recipe that was already out there and I just kind of brought it down a little, modified it a little. We're also gonna do a 90 minute boil. Why? I've opened some windows. I wanna see how bad the moisture is in here. I don't have a venting system yet. I do have a massive dehumidifier. I may be kicking that on, we'll see how it goes. But let me go down the recipe. And as you can see, maybe, maybe not. Some, and then I have another thing in there. But we're only doing, I wanna say it's about nine pounds in grains. So we have three pounds, eight ounces of Vienna malt. It's a Vienna lager. You gotta have the Vienna malt. I did see recipes without, without Vienna. No, thank you. I also saw recipes that used caramel. And from what I'm understanding, yeah, you can, but Munich is a better one, or at least one that's a little bit more historic from what I was reading. But needless to say, three pounds, four ounces of Munich one, two pounds, eight ounces of Maris Otter, 2.7 ounces of chocolate malt. The chocolate, beyond, beyond that, I was looking at Carafa, and for some of the stuff I read out there from professional brewers was the chocolate seemed to maintain the flavor a little bit better long-term as far as just giving it a hint of color without giving it any flavors that may or may not be wanted. Hops, hops are gonna be super easy. We got one ounce of Halter Block, if I can even say that one correctly. And that's sitting at 9.3% alpha, and it's a 20 minute addition. And then I got a one and a half ounce I'd love to put like four ounces, but one and a half ounce of Saz from Yakima Valley. Yeah, I, I like the spice from Saz. Saz is just a really crisp hop. I just like it. And it's supposed to be a crisp beer. And I got lazy. I have so much going on and I just wasn't ready to do a liquid starter. I was ready, let's just say, but I didn't have the time. So we're going to be doing Lullaman's dry diamond lager yeast as our yeast. We're also going to mash in at 152 Fahrenheit. I want to give this some medium body. Still going to be hopefully a dry beer, but we need that medium body so we can get the best possible flavor. And yeah, I just found one problem with having windows open, crosswind. Things are flying all over the place. But yeah, it's kind of crazy. I've got everything here. I've got the mill. I've got an induction burner here to heat up water for sparging. I've got the brewing system here. It's plugged in, it's on. I don't have to go anywhere. And if I do, it's a couple feet in one direction or another. So you know what? Let's get brewing. I'm gonna crush the malts real quick. There's no reason for you to sit and watch that. Okay, I know this might look a little crazy, but I do it so you can get the views, you can see everything, you know, it's all about the angles. I'm gonna eventually have to mount some sort of camera system to the ceiling so we can reduce vibration. But, water's getting warm. Got the brewing salts, of course, like normal. I'll put them up in the corner somewhere so you can see. I did a ton of research on the brewing salts for a Vienna lager, hands down. This is the go-to, so there we go. Like I said, 
I'll work on getting a stable camera setup. We're gonna let that heat up to 152, and then we'll go ahead and mash in. I've got all the grains crushed. I'm actually not going to use any rice hulls. I wanna see if I can capture some of that grain, reuse it, make little doggy biscuits from a dog. <laughs> Mix it up with some fresh pumpkin for her. She'll love that. Or well, not fresh, but hey, pumpkin pulp. Ta-da, 152 Fahrenheit. Go ahead and get mashed in. My little spoon, I love this thing. I had to go find it, it was in the kitchen. So this is new, <laughs> being up on a ladder and mashing in. Not sure if that's really safe. And of course, I forgot the mash basket. I'm happy I caught it. Would have been third time ever. Not a good thing. Okay, here we go. We're gonna lower the mash basket. Probably cause our temperature to drop a little. I'll let you let me know. And let's go ahead and get mashed in. And like I said, haven't used haven't not used rice hulls in a long time. So I'll try to speed this up for you. because I know it's all super exciting. Okay, we're mashed in. I'm gonna let that sit for about 10 minutes while I get the recirculation kit all set up and ready to go. And we will go from there. Okay, here we go. Oops. Guess it helps if I open the flow. That looks pretty good. I think we'll go with it. That's it. This induction burner for heating up water is like stupid fast. That was just the mash, 90 minutes. At 30, I did lift the grain basket. I didn't mention that and I didn't show you. The other thing I was just thinking is that when I'm doing this, you're really not gonna be able to see me sparge. So I'll do my best to see if I can adjust that even taller. I'm afraid it's gonna shake the taller it is. <sighs> I wish this table had like hydraulics, you know, go up and down. We'll figure it out. It's a learning uh, experience every time, whether you're brewing or you're doing something else. So I'm gonna go ahead, pull the grain basket, do the sparge. And yes, I chose to do the ring the first time around. I like the ring. I think it just needs a ripple effect, kind of like the grandfather so that this thing snaps in and we can rock on and get rid of the feet. Start a campaign, get rid of the feet, bring back the ring. I don't know. So, and here we go. I will say in this quiet environment, I hear so much noise out of this handle foundry that I never really took notice to. I mean, this bad boy produces some noise between the fan and yeah, it just does. I know handling hot stuff without gloves is Really not very smart, but I have some gloves nearby. That's a benefit. And we're gonna have to get right next to it so I can pull it, get enough leverage. This ought to be fun. I wonder if the table can take my feet. Probably not. Now we're gonna say that did not go well. Let's drop it back down. Second attempt will be the charm. There we go, we got it. Whew. And I'm pretty sure that camera can see the sparge. So we should be good. Just a, just a tiny bit. We're gonna let that drain for a minute and then we'll start the sparge. Okay, so let's get sparging. Yeah, I had to throw a jacket on. It's getting kind of cool. Cool out here. Or outside really, when I walk outside. We'll speed this up. Okay, we're gonna let that drain for a little bit and then we'll kick it up to a boil. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna kick it up to a boil. We'll get there. I gotta clean all this stuff off to be polite. Let's go around here. Oh, great. Let's clean that off. Kick it all the way up to a boil. And we'll kick the power to 100%. There we go. I'm gonna wipe this up. Let's rock on and we'll start to boil. Okay, I know the temperature says 209 Fahrenheit, but I've definitely got a rolling boil. So we're gonna start those timers and rock on, but I've already rubbed the bottom a little bit. It's feeling good. I don't feel any kind of real 
Might feel a little bit, but not much. Or stuck to the bottom. You don't ever want grains or any kind of malt stuck to the bottom. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with a problem, even with low density burners. So, there we go. Let's start the timer. Okay, our first hop addition. We're at 20 minutes. We got an ounce of Holiter Blanc. It smells very, very nice. I think I would expect smooth, just nice. Nothing to write home about, just nice. And there we go. That's our 20 minute edition. I'll stop that and we have another edition in 15 minutes. Okay, that's our five minute edition. Clear that out. So we'll drop, I'll, say, I'll drop a whole Warflock tablet. It's all good. I'm dropping about a tablespoon worth of yeast nutrient. Maybe a little more, hopefully not too much. Putting that down there. And our last bit of hops. So we have an ounce and a half of saz or saz, however you want to say it. Ooh, that bad boy is hot and full of water. So let's pop that open without burning the crap out of myself. Quite literally, ow, that hurts. Ah, crap. Yeah, oh, fudge sickles and a half. Okay, I was gonna say the brew day went great until I burned myself. But let's drop in an ounce and a half here. Drop that back in there. We've got five minutes, I gotta get the jaded silly in there and I gotta clean up some liquid that just poured over the backside. It'll be good. Da -da! Okay, let's get this bad boy in there. Do -do -do -do. What am I hitting? What am I hitting? Probably the grain or the hot bag. There we go. Okay. I know my temperature probably just dropped for a minute, but it's okay. As soon as it comes back up, I'll <laughs> shut it off. And there we go. We're chilling. I thought I only had hot water coming out of that one spigot because it's it's red. But it appears I can get cold out that spigot too, so. Whew. That would have been very bad, very upsetting. Okay, we're gonna get this chilled down. Once we get it chilled down, I'm gonna move it to the fermenter. Once we get the fermenter, it'll be like fractions of a second. I'll pitch the yeast and we'll rock on. Okay, so we had a few issues. Yeah, I was a little nervous, had some anxiety. You know, it's all new, all new space. Trying to figure out how I was going to do this. And I probably should have gone through a mock brew from beginning to end before I actually brewed. But, so I had some mistakes that were my fault and I had some more mistakes that were my fault. First of all, we mashed at 152 for 90 minutes. Yes, not 75, 90. And I totally skipped the 168 Fahrenheit, yeah. But it's okay, we dumped in one gallon of sparge water at a 170, it'll be fine. The only good and bad here is that our brew house efficiency is around 78.5%. That sounds great. That puts me at 5.4% ABV. Um, like a, theoretically, we should be around 25 IBUs, so that'll be great. The ABV might actually be a little lower. The reason I say that is towards the second half of the mash, I noticed that my temp spikes were up around 157 instead of 152. I forgot to set the power down to about 65, 75 and left it up a little on the 100% side. So yeah, instead of medium body, it might be full body, but it's all good. It'll still be good beer. We'll get our temperature control. We'll get our fermentation going. Everything's ready to go except I've got my uh, White Labs, Clarity Firm, that's it. Couldn't even remember what it was called, Clarity Firm. We're gonna dump that on in there. Trust me, I need it, because definitely had some uh, particles, haze, whatever else you wanna call it. And then, I don't know if I've actually used this. I think I've used it once. But Lollamon's Lager Yeast Diamond. It says between about 75 and I think it was 86 Fahrenheit. And this is sitting probably right at around 74, 75 is when you should pitch it. It did expire last month, but what was that? A few days, <laughs> a full month, I don't know. 
I'm not worried. This stuff will kick butt. It'll be fine. And I'm gonna double check the temperatures I need to ferment at. I believe it's around 48 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. I will double check. I can probably see it on here, but can't actually read it because my eyesight sucks. This is the one thing I love about the new space. Everything is either within an arm's reach or a few steps. It makes life so, so freaking simple. It just really does. I don't have to run up and down stairs. I don't have to count 18 to 22,000 plus steps for a brew day. I mean, wow. Yeah, this is why I need to get on that treadmill because I won't be running up and down a hill anymore trying to brew. There we go. Oh, I hear the, the gases coming in. Let's see if we can get that open. No, come on, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna ferment it under pressure at around 10 to 12 PSI. Dry yeast just doesn't have a lot of odor. Just doesn't. Oh, I gotta get a tilt cleaned. I wanna throw a tilt in here. Not that a tilt's gonna be very accurate once it's under pressure, but it will let me know things are moving without having to watch a bubble, you know what I'm saying? Which, under pressure, I'm not gonna see a bubble. Yeah, I sprayed the hell out of that star sand. Everything's been soaked in star sand. I clean these after I get done using them, and then just before I dump everything in, I usually star sand the hell out of them. Sometimes I even put a little bit of PBW, clean it, and then star sand and clean it, rinse it out. I might leave a little bit of bubbles, but I do rinse the majority of it out. So, yeah, I'm gonna have to find myself a tilt real quick, make sure it's all good, make sure that it's calibrated, and chuck that bad boy in there. But don't forget, like, subscribe, keep sharing. Definitely appreciate the sharing. And thanks for joining me on the first brew in the new Bruce Ace Brew Studio, whatever you wanna call it. Yeah, <laughs> here's to a great 2023. And I'll get better at this with the new space because, you know, it is a little bit like riding a bike. It's just a matter of where everything is. Uh, the cooling system works great. Uh, running water to and from there, figured that out. Can't think of anything else and Easy Dens came through, did a great job. Jaded Silla did a great job. Anvil did a great job. Everything worked really well. So thanks again and cheers. I'm gonna have a beer, relax, and go to bed. Yes, go to bed. Thank you.